WPGET Web Dev Tutorials for All User Levels. What I want to talk to you about today is the really good ways that Bricks allows you to control um, your properties uh, through classes, through their class system, or being able to set um, values on uh, font size, spacing, all that sort of stuff um, using whatever you want. You're not restricted to units of pixels, EM, etc. You can use variables, classes, um, direct uh, CSS values, whatever you like, which is incredibly powerful once you start using it and understanding how that works with bricks. I've got a quick example here. Um, and what it is, if you look at these first five headings here, I've got a bit of CSS which gives me a continuously responsive uh, font size between uh, an XL size to XXL, L to XL, M to L, S to M, and then XS to S. Um, and if I scroll my, if I, sorry, if I move my viewport width here, you can see that they're actually changing in size. So each of these fonts here, actually if I pick one of these, and you'll see in the font size over here, it's currently on 46.96. As I move the viewport, you can see that font size changing. It's down to, it's using CSS clamp, so it gets down to its minimum size, and it won't go below that. So it gets to 40 pixels for that particular one, and it won't go lower than that. And we've also got a clamp at the other end, so it won't go larger than a certain size. So there's some CSS rules to do that. The other one is some spacing. So if we look at this uh, section here, and if we're above our 991, which is the uh, viewport width for a tablet in portrait determined by bricks, uh, we've got a margin, sorry, not the margin, we've got a padding at the top and bottom of 100. Now I've used, um, 10 REM, which is based on 10 pixels, which is why we've got that, and 2 REM on the sides, which gives us our 20 pixels. If I move my viewport in, we get to a point where we've now got 83 top and bottom and 16 on the sides, get down to our mobile breakpoint, and we've got 71 top and bottom and 14 on the sides. Now, this has all been done by adding a single uh, variable to each of the, the top, uh, top bottom and the left right. So I'm gonna show you how that works. Now, so in Bricks, just quickly, a couple of issues here. One is you'll see in Bricks here, in the editor, I'm not seeing the same thing that I'm seeing in the front end. Now the reason for that is it seems like the, if I actually bring up my F12 and have a look at one of these, uh, headings here. What I'll see is if I find the actual heading, it's a bit harder in the editor because you've got all these uh, extra um, you know, divs and whatnot for the editor. So here it is there, I've got a H1 and on that I've got a uh, FS for font size, clamp XL to XXL. But if I look down in my CSS, that is being overridden in the editor. So what's happening is that the bricks type hero, if I've set that in my theme, is overriding in the editor, but it's not overriding in the front end. So it must be the order that it's actually loading those in. So I can make it more specific, or I can just add, if I wanted to, I can just add the important uh, at the end of that rule. Uh, and now that will look correct in the editor. So if we look at that now, my H1. Now my uh, rule uh, FS uh, clamp XL to uh, XXL is now the dominant rule. So that's just the difference between the front end and the editor for bricks. Um, so you can either try and make these rules more specific or just add important to the end of them if you want them to work in the editor. For now what I think I might do is just add the important in the editor. I'll just grab that for each of these. Save that, and now in the editor you can see that they're all uh, working as they're supposed to. So if I now switch between my breakpoints, I can see those changing. 
Okay. All right, so actually that doesn't work even there with these breakpoints because it must not be seeing this window as a, a viewport. It must be looking at the entire width. So anyway, that um, that's the first thing. Now, the first thing I mentioned was the BRICS class system. Now, you hear this a lot, and it's at first, it's pretty hard to understand what they actually mean by that because every page builder uses CSS rules, CSS classes, whatever you like to call them. So to say one editor is a class-based one, the other one's not, is not accurate. They're all CSS rule-based or class-based. What's different about what Bricks is doing? And I'm only familiar with Divi, uh, things like Divi, uh, Beaver Builder, uh, WP Bakery, uh, Elementor. I haven't used Oxygen or um, Breakdown, so I don't know what they have. Um, but what I'm liking in here is, let's say, for example, if we wanted to add a class to this heading, uh, we just head over to the settings and we type in a class name. If we've already done it before and it exists, it will be in this list. Uh, if it's not in the list, it will add that to the list. So it actually creates a class on the fly for you. Now, at the moment, for example, I've got on this heading here, I've got the class uh, FS clamp XL to XXL. Now, I'm actually defining that through uh, my WP code box here in that, uh, that um, class there. But in Bricks itself, when you select a class, see that's orange at the top there, which means that class name is selected. Everything in here in the style that you apply now is applying to that class. So if you apply that class to other elements, all of the styles that you apply here will apply to all of those elements. If it is not selected, if I'm just on the, uh, so none of these is orange, and I hit the style and I change my topography, for example, here. Uh, if I you know, set that to the left justification, that is only applying to this one heading. If I go and uh, select this, uh, this FS clamp XL to uh, XXL, and then I hit my align left, that's applying it to the class. So every single element that has this class on it will have that same alignment. So, Basically, it's taking all of the settings UI uh, and allowing you to apply it to an individual element or to a class, and then all you have to do is, do is apply that class to any element, and all of those settings will apply to it. So it's just a really cool way of centralizing your settings into class names. So that's the class system, I think, that people talk about with um, Bricks, and I really, really like the idea of it. Uh, I'm not going to go into that too much right here because that's a different topic. Uh, all we need to know for now is if I want this one here, for example, to be uh, FS clamp L to XL, so large to uh, extra large, I have this class. If I take that off, it's just going to use the hero. I think I said that to hero. It is. So it's the heading one with the type hero, so it just uses those styles. If I add the uh, uh, FS clamp L to XL, uh, it's going to use um, this font size here. All right, so that's pretty much what that's doing. So cool, cool, cool. So we two ways of creating classes. One is directly in Bricks, just by typing a name and then changing your style settings. The second way is that you can type it into Bricks, use a CSS editor, um, could be Codebox, could be um, WP Codebox, uh, Code Snippets, uh, plenty of other editors that you can use, um, but that's pretty much how that works. Right, so that's with the classes. So I can easily put these classes on here and apply those rules. Now, what if I want to do it differently? I don't want to put this class on there uh, for whatever reason. I think this you'd use this as a utility, so it makes sense to do so. Let's say we don't have that class on there. We just want to apply that Settings, so I want the, uh, the FS clamp L to XL. Put a variable for that there, which is that variable there. Now, I'll, I'll go and go through all of this. I will actually just do a quick run through at the end. But uh, what we need to do is actually grab that variable. I'm going to copy that. 
If I head over to that heading now and I go into my style, topography and my font size, I chuck that in as a CSS variable, it does exactly the same thing. So I can apply it as a class or directly on this individual element by using that variable. That is cool. That is something that gives you so much flexibility that is just unbelievable. Now, even better, so we can then go back to our code box and let's say we want this one to actually be a bit different. We can actually grab the entire CSS value, property value there, copy that, so I'm using a clamp uh, from my base uh, large, um, my variable width to be 4VW and my maximum to be base XL. So I'm just gonna grab that whole uh, property there, property value, and I'm going to paste that in there. That does exactly the same thing. So this can be a calc, it can be any CSS valid property or valid uh, value uh, for your font size property and it will work. So we've got three different ways of doing the same kind of thing. So A, add a class, B, add a variable, um, C, add the actual uh, value that we want to use on that as whatever we like. It could be uh, a number and percentage, number and pixels, it could be a clamp, it could be a calc, whatever you like. And this is the difference that I'm seeing between other builders where you might have a number and then a unit. So it might be, you can put in say 20 and then you might be able to uh, select percent, um, REM, EM, you know, VH, VW, whatever. So you can select a number and then a unit. This gives you complete flexibility over whatever you want to do with that. And I think that's extremely powerful. So I'm going to take that back out. I'm going to put my uh, CSS class because I think it makes more sense uh, for this kind of thing because we just want to apply a, a single CSS class. If we change that uh, back over here. It's going to apply that everywhere uh, that we've used it. So it makes more sense for me to do it as a CSS class. Okay. So that's the font size, so FS font size. Um, and the next thing I'm going to show you is what we did with the section over here. So back to the uh, demo here, I was showing you how this padding is changing depending on the viewport width. And I'm going to show you how that's done. So what we've got is we've got some uh, padding rules, uh, spacing rules. So I'm taking a, and I'll run right through this one at the end. So I've got some spacing, so I'm calling it SP for spacing, R for responsive, uh, and I'm giving it a size. So uh, my XS is my base XS, etc. Uh, uh, and then going through to, I'm going to use the XXL and the medium on this particular example. So I've got SP, R for responsive, XXL, by default is my base XXL, which is 10 REM. So that's what gives me the 100 pixels when I'm above 991 pixels width. I then have a media width, uh, media query with a width of 991, which is the uh, bricks determined uh, tablet uh, portrait breakpoint. And what I'm doing is redefining this variable, FS for font size, SP for spacing, and I'm taking the base size and then dividing it by a divisor. Okay, so tablet uh, divisor for that breakpoint. If we look back up here, I've got a mobile and tablet divisor for my font size and spacing. All this is saying is that uh, if we're looking at our spacing, for example, uh, on a mobile, we want to divide these base units by 1.4. On a tablet, we want to divide them by 1.2. So you can set these however you like for font size and spacing. All right, and then we've got our breakpoint at 478 pixels, so mobile portrait, uh, where basically it's the same thing. We're just redefining these variables uh, using the mobile font size divisor and the, that's current correct, I just realized. This should, actually, no, that is correct. Uh, mobile font size and mobile spacing divisor. And that's my rules to make it responsive. So all I have to do is go over to my um, settings and I've made this a global. 
So I go into my theme styles, go into my section, uh, I put my, va I've got to zoom in on this so it's a bit easier to see. So in my padding, I've got a var, um, bar, sp, r for responsive, xxl, so here we go, here we go, here we go, sp, responsive, xxl, and that's top and bottom, and on the left and right, you can't see it in this thing here, I've got a sp, r, m for medium, so var, sp, r, m for medium, uh, and that is what gives me my um, variable padding top and bottom as I move this through its breakpoints. That's pretty much it. It's as simple as that. So what's really, really exciting to me about this is the fact that I can put whatever I want in here. This can be a value like kel, clamp, whatever you want. It can be an actual value like a uh, you know five percent, ten percent, one rem, two rem, whatever you want. It's just not limited to particular units, uh, and I'm loving that idea. I think that's a brilliant uh, difference that I'm seeing in, in bricks so far. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I will just quickly run through here. So my uh, spacing and sizing, I've got base variables, X, XS through to XXL, um, and just using REMs. I've got a mobile font size, a divisor, tablet font size divisor, uh, space divisor for the same, uh, my font size for responsive. Uh, by the way, if you want fixed sizes, you can just use these bases. Uh, so if I just want a uh, you know a small font, doesn't matter what the viewport is, I'd use a base S. If I want a medium, I'd use a base medium. Uh, if I want it to be responsive, uh, then I will use a uh, where are we? A for example here. Font size, responsive, XS is the base XS. Font size, responsive, small is the base small. Uh, then they will automatically override with these queries where it redefines those with the divisor at the different breakpoints. It's as simple as that. So I've got a lot more here which does do with colors. I'm not gonna go through that because the tutorial will just get too long. Uh, but really, really cool. Um, I know there's a lot of you out there that probably use things like Automatic CSS, which has a lot of this stuff in there for you. Uh, I wanted to make this specifically without needing to add anything else, uh, just using your own rules um, and own methodologies, um, so you don't have to add another plugin if you don't want to. In saying that, the irony is I'm using WP Codebox to manage this. Uh, that's for simplicity. I enjoy using Codebox for this. You could also stick this into a, um, a child theme, um, CSS, whatever you want to do. Um, I think even Bricks has a place where you can put that. I'm not sure where that is. I can't remember. Let me have a quick look. I think in Bricks you've got... What do we got here? Settings. Custom code. There you go. So you got some custom CSS you can stick in there. I wouldn't stick it in there, but um, you know you can put it there if you want to. You don't need an extra plugin to do that. Um, so yeah, I'm just loving this. I think this is a brilliant shift for these two things. One is being able to put whatever value you want into these uh, fields, whether it's padding, margin, font size, width, whatever you want. The second thing is the brilliant uh, usage of this. Um, uh, class uh, system here um, for managing the styles uh, from the UI and I think those together make this tool so much more professional so much more easy to to use than uh, than any other tool that I've worked with so really really well done bricks I'm really really happy with this and I think that you guys have done a fantastic job so uh, kudos to you thank you